Father, I pray that the sermon, the message that we give today in the brief few minutes we have will bring life and strength to those who hear it. May it help them, Lord God, feel and see the importance of being present. In your name we pray and everyone say. Amen. This series we've been in this month is called Helping the Home Team. And in the series, my goal has been to try to come up with a way to help you understand the importance of helping others but not just helping others, but helping yourself. Sometimes we're so committed to helping others that we forget us. And so what I did was I listed five, I'm listing five simple things you can do to help your team, your life, your family, your world be better. The one is to have a clear sense of your job description, what you do and don't do. If you are clear about your job description, it helps you. I think families, I argue, are often unclear that oftentimes churches think it's their job to do all the training of children. It's their job to make, help everybody come to God. And so we overspend, overbuild, overdo, trying to do more than we should. I, if I understand it's not my job description to compete with the Civic Center, so I don't need to build one. I have a different job. It's not my job to train all of your children to be godly. I'm a supplement. Everybody say supplement. supplement. That's your job. Children's church is not the main place your kids should learn about God. And I talked about that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, where he said, when you teach, you teach your children by walking down the road with them, hanging with them, it's the day-to-day -day responsibility that you have. I am simply a supplement. We simply provide supplemental support for you. They're not with us long enough to be responsible for that. Then we talked about the importance of not being divided. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Division is a destroyer of financial strength. It's why families can't succeed. It's why your family will never have much money, because you're divided. Your money, my money, your life, my life, your way, my way. There's, there's no unified effort. One of the greatest strengths I have is unity. Honest to God, I have a team around me that's amazing. I can, I can do anything. My wife is an amazing team member. We may disagree because we're different, so she says often. We are different in terms of what we like, different in terms of how we respond to things. Her, her, her normal approach is, can I ask you something? Because I don't really want to try to guess you on this one. And then when I'll answer, she says, I had no idea you would say that. Now, that's after 30, I'll be, I'll be 38 years of marriage in December. That's a long time to still not know everything. So you have to understand that we're not going to agree and know everything. But the key is to find a way to unite and not be divided, which often leads us to the third thing we talked about this month is forgiveness. Let it go. Everybody say that with me. Please come on. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's cheaper emotionally, mentally, physically to not be held hostage by a person's misjudgment, misstatement, um, mistreatment of me. I, I Whatever, whatever I perceive, and we all perceive that. There are times when my wife perceives it, I perceive it, my kids perceive it. Everybody has their perception. How do you manage that? Well, one of the keys is to forgive. And I talked about, that's a great sermon. You got to go back and listen to it. Because it talked about how do you forgive when, when they're still dangerous? What do you do if they've, they've, they're, they've, it's not safe? I forgive you, but should I let you come move back in? It's a very powerful message. But I want you to look at that, and I want you to measure it and study that. And it's a great thing to, to, to go back and look at. Then number four, last week, you enjoyed Pastor Greg? Yes. He talked about the importance of expanding your vision. If you're going to help the family, the home team, you can't stay in the same place. You have to learn how to expand the way you see the world. And then today, we talk about being present. Your team is hurt if you're not present and on the battlefield with your team. But... Because we live in such a mobile world, this sermon caused me some trouble. Because I, I, I have to be fair. I, and, and there's some things that I'm not going to be fair about if I'm not careful. So I really struggled with this. I really did. But I want to ask two questions, and I want you to think about them, and I'll do my best to kind of make it simple and plain in the next few minutes. First of all, I want you to ask this question. Repeat with me. How present, how present am, I? am I? Think about that. How present are you and your family? How present are you? Are you, would you be considered, if we were to ask the people close to you, that you are present, you are engaged? The home team is never going to do well if you're not present. 
If I have a company, there's a certain amount of presence they need. If I have a family, there's a certain amount of presence that's needed. But the problem is, uh, sometimes people don't see that, and they end up hurting the home team. So second question is, how has your absence affected the home team? How has your absence affected your children, your, your company, your life? I know I, wonderful people that had a great company, and they lost the company because they were absent too much. You start making money, and you start going around, you start, you know, you nurture the business, you don't nurture customers, you're not engaged anymore, you just assume that you can live the good life, and so you end up in trouble, and it sneaks up on you. But I want to make sure I say this, because now I'm about to jump into something that's really, really important, because, and so I wrote a little statement, you know, so that you be clear, okay, so here's, here I go. Nothing I'm going to say is to imply that physically going to church or being present is not important. I simply want to point out that this culture defines being present differently. Nothing we do in this church can be done if all of us stop being present. Presence is important, but people don't define it the same way. For example, right now there are hundreds and hundreds of people watching us from home. Hello, streaming people. They're out there. And over the years, there's thousands. Now, I want to show you how prevalent this is. I want you to watch this, okay? You ready? When I tell you to do this, I want you to look around you, okay, when I tell you this, okay? How many of you at some point stream the services? Raise your hand. Look around you. Look at that. It's amazing. So if I'm going to fuss about people who stream, I'm talking about some of you. <laughs> Streaming is a gift. Technology has allowed us to be in more than one place. And, and people who are home watching really believe they should get credit for church. But preachers don't like that. We want to count your bodies. One, two, three, four, five. We want to count you. And I, I have the most interesting conversations with leaders who struggle with this technology because attendance physically goes down in many ways. They even want you to physically bring your offering and give it to the church. They want you to be, and many times, I remember very clearly that if physical attendance was down, the income was down. That is no longer true. As a matter of fact, sometimes when attendance is way down, the income goes up. Do you know, you'll find this interesting too. Do you know that people give more money when they're home than when they're in the building? Go home, put your pajamas on, and give. Praise God. <laughs> I'm telling you, they give almost two or three times more money. I don't know if it's the pajamas. They get anointed. I don't know what it is. But when they, <laughs> when they send it in, matter of fact, the biggest amount per capita in our church that's given is through the mail. People mail, that's isn't amazing, through the mail. The second one would be, um, and I, have to, I can pull it, I can, I can look, get the exacts, but I think the app is the second one, and online. People giving digitally are outside the, 60% of our income comes outside the building. 60%. Plus, sometimes it's 70. And, and all, all we, we're in a world that's totally different. And let me tell you what happens when things change. We don't like it. We struggle with it. So that's why even in this message I was struggling because I don't want to imply to people who are not here that I'm putting you down and saying you're not getting credit for being here. And you no, I, I'm just saying there's something about the way the world sees things. So I gave you three observations to make my point. Repeat with me, please. Say, we work differently. We go to school differently. And lastly, said we go to church differently. I put the notes there in some sources so you can look at it on your own. If you're watching from home on your notes, you can click on the link and you could go ahead to the source that I gave you. But I just wanted you to just, just follow me in this line of thought because it causes me problems. Listen to what he says about work. More Americans' employees are working remotely, and they are doing so for longer periods, according to a Gallup survey released on Wednesday. Last year, listen to this, 43% of employed Americans said they spent at least some time working remotely. It's becoming a trend. As a matter of fact, he even calls it the, 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 the future work. This is how people will work long term. And those numbers, if you read on, the numbers have gone up over the years. It, it, I mean, doubled in the last couple of years, from 23% or so up to 43 It's It's a major way. Apple um, has a whole tier of if you call in and talk to a person for Apple support, they probably are at home. And their supervisors are at home, and the regional people are at home. 
There are three, four tiers up of people that are all working from home. It's cheaper in a lot of ways. Our church uses that technology. We allow some of our staff to work from home in some occasions. As a matter of fact, there are, we just came on what I call a work slowdown, which means they get almost a week and a half uh, off in a certain part of the year where they work mobily. And it's really a test, too. It helps us to see how we can work when we're not in the building. So if a storm happens, something happens, nobody's, nobody has to be in the building. All of our money, all of our processes, everything is mobile. Every single, every single, I wanted every single thing. We do not have to be here to work. We can talk to you without being here. Oh, yeah. There are ways I can send you stuff and do stuff. And that's because the world has changed. Can you say it with him? Please come on. Say the world, the world. Has, changed. has changed. So we work differently. We go to school differently. There are 58 million students in America. In 2017 to 2018 school year, 1.6 million of those students were homeschooled. And then that is, a, listen to me, a 43,000 increase over the previous year. So in one year, it went up by 43,000 more students. So people are going to school differently. Don't talk about college. That's a whole nother level. My entire master's degree was online. I went in two times. There's another program I'm looking at that would require me to go in three times for a doctoral study. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Everything is totally different. Everything. And, it, and it, it's, a, it's a different way of defining things. So that's why... We have to embrace those who define presence differently. And if you don't, you'll lose out. Because thirdly, as I said earlier, churches now church differently. We go to church in different ways. It used to be, and let me give you the averages. The average person probably comes to church, oh my goodness, um, uh, two times a month would be an average. But it's really one to two times a month. That's a faithful, faithful church member. Ask your neighbor, so, so where you been? Come on, ask the where you been? Where you been? Where you been? Where you been? <laughs> scared to ask him, aren't you? Scared to ask him. But, but, it's, but people, people will tell me, I was here. I streamed in or I watched it on the app. I, I couldn't get there. I had to work or something happened in my life. Something changed. And sometimes it's not such a spiritual or dynamic reason. It's I was tired. Is that a good reason, Pastor? Does it matter? If they're tired, they're not coming. I don't have the power to control that. But shouldn't they be faithful? Shouldn't they be here? I told you, as a pastor, I want you to always be here. I'm here every week. Give me an amen. amen. I, I think it's almost every week I'm here. I mean, very seldom am I, am I not here except I'm working or doing something else. But most of the time I'm here. But, but, but I'm, an every, I'm an every weaker. And there are, there's about 25% of you that are every weakers. About 25%, but the rest of you float. Come on, say amen. Work with me. Now work with me. But, but, but if you, if, if I teach this sermon, this is why I struggle with it a little bit, because I don't want to imply that if you are not here every week that you're a bad person and that somehow, you know, you need to somehow apologize. You know, it used to be when you met your pastor in the street or someplace, you always said, oh, I haven't been there. You know, well, if you got 60 people or 30 people, you can tell. But... One of the, the challenges of a larger church is you can't always tell because we have 3,400 active members here, plus not including other people. I mean, so it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of people. And you see it in our bigger events. So, you, you know, this is, you know, they come in small groups, six or 700 people, three, 400 people, you know, four or five times. It's, it's, it's all good, you know, but the, the world has changed. And so my definition of presence has had to broaden. That's my big point. And I have, I've had to embrace it. And here's what I think you should do. I think you should take advantage of all the technology that we have. I think if you can't physically come, I think you should look on the app. So I'm going to keep up, you know, and check out the app. I couldn't get there this week. But I'm going to try to come. Because here's what's really important. If you stop coming, there'll be nothing to watch. Can I get an amen to that church if you're here? I mean, you can't stream nothing. So there has to be something that we do. And I believe the Bible says, and I almost used this. I didn't use it in any of the other sermons. But Acts 2.41 has always been an impressive text to me. And I almost built the whole sermon around it, but I kind of got away from it. Acts 2.41 says that they continued in fellowship in the early church. They continued in breaking bread and fellowship, being together. The word koinonia for fellowship, the word, the, the word which means to, be, to, to communicate. It means to basically have something in common, 
a common type of sharing. It, it's really intimate. It's an intimate word. And the disciples in the early church had koinonia. There's something about koinonia and fellowship. I was sharing with somebody before I came out. I said, one of the, you know, one of the things that gets you in trouble in your life is, not, it, it, is isolation. There's nobody present in your life. There's, there's nothing. And, and as a, I think a lot of the, the guys who cheat, a lot of the women who cheat, a lot of the people who do bad stuff, they're bored. They need a presence. They need something in their life that fills their life up. And learning how to manage, manage parts of our life when it's just us. Learning how to, how to be where you need to be. There's a certain amount of my presence that Diane needs. She doesn't need me every day. She's not, a, you know, she's not the kind of person that like, you got to be up front of her every day. She kind of needs her breathing space. But there is a certain amount of presence that she needs. There's a certain amount of presence I need. And there's a certain amount you need. There's some places you need to physically be. There's some places you need to physically be in the room. Because there's something profound about that. There's nothing like the little kids, my little grandbaby says, come sit by me, pop up, sit down by me, sit down. Sit down, it's your point, right here, right here. Again, my life, it was something's backwards here a little bit. But in that moment, what she's saying, I want your presence. And I don't have to say anything profound. She doesn't want a sermon, doesn't want me to talk much. She just wants me to be here, pop pops, while she talks to those little puppets she's got. <laughs> and then if I sit there and, and you know, it, it, it's amazing what that means. Are you present? And I think when you get that straight in your head, it helps you. And here's what I want to close with. God promised to be present in your life. Jesus promised to be present in your life. Look what he said in, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. And you've heard this. This is a famous verse. Be strong of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor what? Forsake you. He promises to be present. And he admonished Joshua to be present. Look at this. You must go with this people. Read that with the peace. Come on. You must go with this people to the land. Read it again. Come on. You must go with this people to the land. Joshua, you cannot just be the leader. You've got to go with them to the high school gathering. You've got to go with them to the first day of school. You've got to go with them, Joshua. You've got to be present. There's an element of my life where I need to be physically present. I may work. I may have a lot to do. But there's certain things I don't need to miss. Because God knew it's important. Jesus said something about it in John chapter 14, verse, verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many what? Mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go, listen to this now carefully. I go to do what? Prepare a place for you. Not just to prepare a place for you. Listen to the rest of this. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will do what? Come again and receive you. Unto who? Myself. This is all about you and me. Where I, that where I am, there you may be also. Notice this whole focus on his presence. Verse 16. And I, if I pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, another helper, that he may, what? Abide with you. Notice the focus. Forever. Bottom of the verse, it says, and says that he, will, he dwells with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Notice the focus. I'm, I'm going to be present, 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 present in your life. And if you're honest, he's always been present. Always worked that out, always kind of slided, slides, pushed you through. There's something about understanding the value of presence. I, as a father, my wife said something to me so early in, in our marriage. It was so profound. She said, you know, I want you to work. I'm glad you want to work hard, but I really want your presence. I want you. Are you present? And that is my final question. I know you're busy. I know you have to work, but are you present? Do you, do you, do, you know, you may travel. You may have to go a lot more if you're military. Good God, help us all. I know you roll around. 
the world to save us. But do you call? Do you write? Do you make an effort? And it's so easy if you're not careful to not be present. And that's why the home team hurts. All you wanted your daddy to do was be present. Stopping by the school and eating lunch with you would have been amazing. A simple phone call, a simple day out to the movies would have been amazing. Being present answering your phone, responding back. I can't talk now, but give me a minute. The reason I gave all the members of my, in the church my email was because I wanted to be present. I'm one guy. It's a lot of you, one me. But everybody knows my email address, right? What is, what is my email address? Pastor at what? Overcomingbyfaith.org. Here's how you can never forget this. If you do, you're sad, okay? If you forget this. You're going to be labeled sad, okay? He is the pastor of what church? Overcoming by faith. There you go, dot org, bam. You can't ever forget. We know how to keep, and people email me, and they, they're about 100 a month or so, sometimes less, it depends, you know, on, the, on whatever's happening. And they'll say, is this you? I say, yeah, it's me. <laughs> they ask me questions. They ask me Bible questions. They, 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 they do. And I say, well, what do you want to know? You know, so, and so it's really fun. Now some, some, one, one person sent me a note and says, when do we have service? So I went to the church website, copied the service schedule, and said, now in the future, go to the church website for that one. They laughed. Ha ha, you're right, Pastor. I'll do that next time. But then they asked the Bible questions. Great. But it's there for a reason. I want to feel present. So in closing, are you present? You work and you're providing, but are you present? Now, in my list, I want to doctor it. Can I change the list for a minute? I have five things. I want to make it six. The first thing I had was, are you present for your family? I don't want that to be the first one. I want to ask this. Are you present for yourself? You've got to be present for you. You know, they say on planes, if you're not a flyer, you may not know this. When you get on the plane, they have this little, little drill they go through, right? And it says, in case, in the unlikely uh, case of an emergency, we're going to show you what to do. But it's highly unlikely. But if something happens, oxygen masks will fall from, your, from the ceiling there. And you are to grab one and you're to put it on yourself first and then anybody you're with. Now, here's why they say that. If it drops from the ceiling and you put it on them first, your kid, and then you pass out, and the kid said, Mom, what's wrong with you? Then they pass out. Everybody's out. <laughs> but if you put it on yourself, then help them put it on themselves, it's how you survive together. You don't help anybody by killing yourself, being tired all the time. You know what's really a weird thing? I've been in this job for 37 years. How long? Now, you don't know many people still working on the same job that long. Because they start talking about retirement around 20 years. And I'm not tired. And I'm not frustrated. I can do it 20 more years. Will I? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I'm not against it. But here's, here's what I think the difference is. The difference is I've taken care of me. That, that I'm not lost. There's something about being personally present, personally in touch with yourself. And then secondly, you need to be present for your family. Not your job, not this church, my family. I need to, I, I need to make sure that they feel I'm present. Sometimes I look at people's schedules and I say, do you, you're not, you're not, you're not there. And I don't, I don't mean being there in a dominant way where you control everything and you're, you know, you're, you know, you, I, don't, I don't want that. But I just want to, I want them to know I'm, I'm here, I'm present. And then after that, I need to be present for my job. I work here. 
I don't need to be all over the world all the time. There's, a, there's travel's fine, but I need to have a certain sense that I need to be present, physically present, emotionally present. I don't need to be here. My mind's someplace else. I need to be here. I, I saw this. I need to post it. I haven't. Denzel Washington did this amazing talk about devices. And he says, does the device have you or do you have it? I've got to put that on my website. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to make that. I'm going to put it up. Give me, a, give me a couple of days. I'm going to put it up. There. That's a phenomenal thing. You, you sit at a table with somebody and you don't talk. I, I, I'm checking myself these days. How you doing? Good to see you. Everybody's on a date. This is how we date. There's something about, there's something about being, these they, don't, they do. They, you know, if, I, I did this. You got to try it. Take your phone and put it in a drawer and go to sleep. It's like it talks to you. Why am I in here? <laughs> Somebody's going to call you. You better let me out. I'm in jail. I'm in jail. This is a bad idea. Ah! You, know, you, know, you feel like it's screaming. Ah! I can't breathe. <laughs> it's become a person. And oftentimes, I'm guilty of this. You got to see how many times we check our phones. It's incredible. We, we are so addicted that we're absent. And it hurts the team. You're not here. Are you here for yourself, your family, your job, your community? I believe in being there for my community, but I got to be really careful about my community because my community will own me. They ask me to be on boards, they ask me to do things, and I often say no. I, just hate saying no. But I can't, I just can't do it all. You pick one or two things that you can do, and you let somebody else do the rest. Because every cause is a good cause. Are you there for your church? Can you be counted on? And lastly, are you there for your country? You know, we should pray for our country these days, but believe for the best. Father, help us to be present. Help us to hear this message today. Help us, God. Help us understand the power of being around. Open your eyes for a second. My kids always surprise me when they speak about me. This is the truth. They never talk about money I've spent. They never talk about anything I've ever bought them, ever. My wife doesn't even talk about it. Nobody in my family does. And I'm a, I mean, I'm in there with them. I mean, I, I believe in working hard and providing and all that. But all they talk about is me being present. He took us here. He took us there. He's always available. He tries to, he'll respond. He calls you right back. He's present. I'm so surprised. It shocks me all the time. Thinking, well, gosh. Talk about tuition. <laughs> talk, about, talk about, but that's not what uh, our car, our car, about a car. No. When you come to a funeral, I do a lot of them, and this is the spot they are in. And when family members walk up. have that look on their face and they don't think you didn't buy me a car I'm going to miss the money in that moment I'm going to miss your presence Man. you ever lost a loved one not the money not the house the presence walking in the house with my mama 
hey girl. That's how you should call her, hey girl. That disrespect, so what? Deal with it. Hey girl. Hey Rick. Yeah. You look good today, boy. I like your jacket. Got your shirt all tucked in. I like a white shirt. Got your shoes shining. I like a man shining shoes. Father, help us realize the importance of presence. And for some whose kids live far away, they'll call more now. They'll make their presence felt. They'll make that bold trip. They'll get in the car and drive. They'll drive the distance to see their kids. They'll, 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 they'll take the time off to just go take them to lunch. Man. Man. I'm sorry. Look at me one more time. I promise I'm in this. Dad, you want to make a big difference? She lives in Seattle. Fly to Seattle and take her to lunch. Save your money. Say, baby girl, I'm just going to come up here and just take you to lunch. You just change your life. You want to change your boy's life? Go hang out with him. Don't correct him about anything. You need to remember I was. Don't no, talk about yourself. Jesus, don't talk about yourself. I remember when I was back in raising chickens, and chickens used to get away, and I used to have to chase them. It was hard work. Nobody wants to hear about that. Especially if you already told them about it. Maybe tell it once or twice, but after that, stop talking about yourself and the chickens. Father, help us to be present. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, after hearing today's message, I realize I need to start a life with Jesus. What you said today, Pastor, speaks to me at a high level, and I want to give my life to Jesus. I need to start a new walk with God today. If you're here today and you want to do that and you want me to pray for you just to help you get your life moving in the right direction, I want you simply to raise your hand. Anybody say, Pastor, pray for me. I, my life, I need, I need God's presence in my life. I see a hand. Anybody else say, pray for me. I see you. Anybody else? Pray for me, Pastor. Anybody else? I see you, four or five over there and some more people. Anybody else? I see you. Thank you. Anybody else? I see you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I see you. Anybody else? God bless all of you. Father. We pray for all these who raise their hands and many who raise their hearts. Let this be, oh God, I pray, the moment when their lives will not be the same. When they say in Jesus' name, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. And I surrender my life to you. You died on the cross to set me free. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming today.